Ikea, and I'm a divine elements of design in the decorator's voice. I'm a certified interior decorator, professional organizer, and planning and productivity strategist. And if you are new to this channel, please give this video a thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button and press the bell for notification to stay tuned to my videos. So on this episode of Hot Topics, we are going to discuss the rise and fall and possible rise, again, of Pier 1 imports. Yes, Pier 1 imports. So before we discuss what's going on right now, currently in 2020, let's kind of go back and see where Pier 1 originated from. So this would be a very quick history lesson. So in the 1950s, a man by the name of William Adler opened up a store called Cost Plus. And just as it says, it was basically the cost of items plus their additional markup. And it particularly kind of specialized in rattan furniture and wicker and things like that. So it had its own unique style. A lot of the items were actually imported from overseas. So that's where the imports part came from. In the 1960s, Charles Tandy, and you may recognize that name from Tandy Leather or either Radio Shack, he actually purchased Cost Plus. Later, Luther Henderson purchased all of the Cost Plus stores from Charles Tandy with the exception of the first one. He left the first one the same and the other ones he changed their name to Pier 1 Imports. So in the 90s, Pier 1 was very popular. A lot of people purchased their items, they went to the stores, and I particularly remember the Kirstie Alley commercials. She was so awesome. She was always running around, going to the stores, and just being excited about everything that popped up. So that whole Kirstie Alley campaign was really fun, and it was actually pretty popular. But just like that, things started to come to an end. Pier 1's furniture was very unique and there were unimportant things, people liked it, but Pier 1 failed to keep up with the times and keep up with the evolving trends. And around 2005, that's when there was so much competition. These were stores like Ross and TJ Maxx and Home Goods. These stores popped up, they were very trendy, very affordable, and they were just very popular. So that's when things started to take a bad turn for Pier 1. One of the downfalls for Pier 1 was when they shut down their online site in 2007. Now, yes, their online site was not as popular or user-friendly as their competitors, but they did have one. But for some reason, they got rid of their online site because they wanted people to go to the stores. So by doing that, they actually gave their competitors an even better edge. They were able to go to the competitors and purchase things and not even think about Pier 1. So when Pier 1 realized that they made a mistake by shutting down their online stores, they restarted them. So they reinstated the stores in 2012 in hopes to you know, keep up with the millennial and get those online sales. But basically, it was too late. Things were just already taking a turn for the worse and it was like a sinking ship. In a last ditch effort to save Pier 1, they took on a loan of $190 million in April of 2014, which is supposed to be paid or supposed to be paid in full April of 2021. Well, as of this video, in fall of 2020, there is no way they're going to have that $190 million. So in January of 2020, they decided to close 450 stores. Now, this was prior to the pandemic. As of the shooting of this video, they had initially said they were closing down all the stores. They were putting out all of their, you know, clo store closures, sales, going out of business sales, selling down everything, even the, you know, items that they're using for store merchandising. They're selling everything. But on September 1st, <laughs> They're still trying to hold on, just like a, a man with a comb over. They're just really trying to hold on. So effective September 1st, now they're saying they're going to bring back their online sales. So as of right now, you can go to pure1.com and you'll see that they're getting ready to start launching this new online sales. Pure One, I have a few words. 
and I, I send this with love. It's time to let it go. Now, there are some items in Pier 1 that I I do like and there are some items that I've had in my home their uh, dining wear like their stemware all the different color wine glasses and water goblets and just all those things are fabulous they are great for setting up a dining room table or a tablescape or a vignette I love it I love some of their items such as their holiday decor their reefs I have the perfect shoe stocking or it's actually like a little stiletto boot stocking if i could find a picture of it i'll i'll show it but i mean they have so many nice little decor items but of course pure one cannot um manage to survive just on decor items they have their furniture pieces that are it's not the best quality and they're a little overpriced for what they are when you have your competitors such as at home or Ross, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Marshalls, even your online competitors like Amazon or Wayfair or Overstock, which their sites are more user friendly, their shipping is a hundred times better. You know, it's really hard to compete with those. My heart does go out to Pier One because it is a company. It is, you know, those are people's jobs. Every time I go into a store that's going out of business, my heart always breaks for the cashier because I know and they know that in only a matter of days or weeks or whatever it is, they're going to be without a job. Their career is over. So I really don't know what to say. You know, right now, I feel sorry for Pier 1. It was a good run while it lasted. And if you are one of my followers, definitely go out. And, you know, right now, as the second week of September, I think things are pretty much like 50% off. So go maybe you can score some fabulous items i don't know but as far as the rise or the new rise i don't know if this september 2020 online is going to work i don't know so in the comment section let me know what your thoughts are about this whole pure one deal do you think they should just go ahead and give up should they <laughs> throw in the flag should they still fight until there's nothing left i don't know <laughs> anyway well thank you very much for uh, watching this episode of hot topics it is a little different than the norm but i thought there was something that i should let people know about so uh once again give this video a thumbs up thank you very much and have a divine day goodbye <laughs>